the Chief of Train Excesses for U.S. Army Europe, and it's my distinct pleasure to introduce our Commander of U.S. Army Europe, Lieutenant General Mark Hurley. Uh, no, no stranger all to Europe, having been a former First Army Division Commander uh, in, in Iraq as well as in, in Germany, uh, former Division, or used for a G3, and former uh, Commander of JMTC. So without any further ado, Lieutenant General. Thank you. That's the kind of introduction I like. Very short, very sweet. Uh, First of all, I want to welcome you all here. I know that you've been receiving information about uh, the school here at, at Ober Emeryal, but I think this is a phenomenal event, and it's something that's been uh, a vision for a long time in U.S. Army Europe, and I think we're using, like we've done so many times in the past, uh, we're using the conflict that we're in to allow us to drive some changes within our various national training structures. Uh, it was, hello there, it was uh, uh, about seven years ago when I was coming out of Iraq for the second time uh, that I received orders to go command our training center at Grafinger. And at the time, that training center was called the 7th Army Training Command, 7th ATC. And when, we, when I got there, I received guidance. I was a one-star general at the time. I received guidance from my boss, uh, General Bell, who was the commander of Army Europe, that said, change this training center from solely focused on uh, U.S. Army uh, soldiers and the training for combat into a, into a center where we could pull allies in to train with us because that's the way we go to war. Uh, also use it to train joint forces. So do your very best to bring in the Air Force and even the Navy uh, into this training command at Gravenberg. So over about the next two years, we first changed the name of the organization from 7th Army Training Command to the Joint Multinational Training Command, and then started an outreach program for not only the training events, but also training of individual soldiers uh, at our non-commissioned officers course. I'm telling you the history of this as a background because I think what we're attempting to do now in combining Joint Forces Command uh, Brunson along with European Command and U.S. Army Europe with all of the nations that are part of our alliance here on the European continent is a fascinating next step toward really securing alliances that train together. Because it all goes back to one very important point. And I learned this a long, long time ago as a young officer, that you never want to go into combat and do things for the first time before you practice them. And I think over the last several years, we've had an opportunity to pull alliances together uh, in both Af in, first in Kosovo, uh, then in Iraq, then in Afghanistan. And if you were to talk to some of the commanders in Afghanistan uh, in the 2001, 2002 timeframe, they would have told you that the alliances weren't working together. And in fact, I just talked to, uh, last week I was in Washington, where I was talking about some of the successes we were having in pulling alliances together and actually training to, to conduct combat operations. And an uh, individual who is a friend of mine, but who commanded in Afghanistan in 2002, came running up to me and said, it's not like that. The alliances don't work well together. I know because I was there. I was commanding in 2002, and we had one force that didn't want to do it, another force that had national caveats, other forces that uh, wouldn't go outside the gate. I said, stop. That's all changed within the last couple of years. And there is a significant amount of alliances coming together, um, some even to the point of meeting the demands of the Lisbon Conference last year and trying to pull together on the battlefield the so-called comprehensive approach that a lot of our politicians and diplomats are still trying to figure out off to the side. Last week I was up in, uh, in the Netherlands and I listened to a bunch of uh, people wearing suits and uh, uh, people who were very senior and high ranking who had not left uh, some of the higher headquarters discuss the comprehensive approach. And having been in combat, I know that that's already being executed on the ground. So once again, 
the soldiers who are being asked to do things are way ahead of the theory uh, that are being that's being discussed at conferences. So over the next couple of days, uh, this group, I guess, I guess you have about 30 nations represented now, and by the time everyone comes together on Wednesday, there will be about 42 different nations represented in this in this group. You're going to talk about the requirements that's been that have been issued from ISAF. And as I understand it, over the last couple of years, those requirements were issued to the people in this room, and then you were all told, go back, figure it out, and train for those requirements. And I think that the combination of, of ISAF with JFCB, with European Command, and now with US Army Europe, we will attempt to offer some solutions at the training model. But I think also this conference will attempt to bring together people for both training and exercises to get a better product on the battlefield because that's where it matters. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to VTC with General Petraeus. And I asked him as the new commander of US Army Europe, I said, where can we do better? How can we uh, improve the training with allies at our training centers? Um, and how can we help our European allies to get to the right peace before they send forces to your theater operations? And having worked for General Petraeus before, I knew he'd be honest with me. And he said, he said, Mark, I'll be honest with you. He said, the, the maneuver forces on the ground are doing pretty, pretty, pretty well, right? He said it's the omelets and the pomelets that we're seeing uh, some challenges with. He said about, he, says, he, he actually said it's a mixed bag. He said some of the omelets and pomelets are doing extremely well, and some of them really need a lot of work and are surprised when they come into theater. So hearing that, I immediately went to my staff at, at Grappenbeer and said, so how many of the omelets and pomelets are we training? And the reply was, we, we get about 20% total at Graf and Beer that go through our training before they go into theater. So I said, okay, we'll link up with ISAF and NMTA, MTA, NTMA, and find out if it's the ones that we're training at Graf and Beer that aren't producing, or if it's the national ones who really don't have the, the task and the conditions and the standards that they need in order to produce a good force. So they're doing that now. And I hope in the next couple of weeks to report back to you and to the various nations as I go around and talk to the chiefs of ground forces and the land force commanders who have good training programs and who are prepared for combat and who do not. We have a, a couple of our representatives from Grafenbeer and the Joint Multinational Training Center here. <coughs> And what they will tell you is they have expanded their vision and their view of what we train. And I'm going to show you a very short uh, clip in just a second. Um, but the focus on counter IED training, the focus on intel fusion and breaking down networks, the focus on force protection and the way we handle uh, those kind of requirements in theater have become their expertise in terms of training uh, the forces there. So I am right now doing a shameless advertisement for our, for our capability at Grafenberg because I want more people to come there, primarily because I want more of your soldiers to come home alive. We've just, uh, as of yesterday, as I recall, shipped a mobile counter IED trainer to Poland it's the first time we've put this new technology on the road and taken it away from Grafenbeer and sent it to another country because they asked for it. Is that right? It went, went yesterday, right, Kurt? It's in the process of moving. It's moving now. Yeah, okay. It, it's on its way, is what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, but, but that was a direct result of some conversations between the commander of Graf, General Salazar, and the trainer in Poland, General Lama. And a conversation I had with General Golovenko, who is the chief of the ground forces in Poland. But I think those are the kind of things we need to continue. But along with that, not only the mobile training for individual pieces, 
What I'd also like to do is invite anyone to play with us at Gravender. And what I mean by that, hello there. Uh, what I mean by that is the fact that uh, as we do rotational preparations for major units, uh, we have had other units come join us. During a, a, a major readiness exercise for the 172nd Brigade that's about to go into RC East, uh, we just completed that, that readiness exercise uh, in April. During that exercise, we had over 700 soldiers from nine different countries playing as part of that event. Poles, Romanians, Slovaks, Albanians, German, French, and Afghan, and a few others that I can't name off the top of my head. You'll see what they went through in this film. I wanted to show this because when you're talking about preparing for combat, and the potential post-ISAF for preparing for full spectrum operations. This is a good opportunity. And we will take anyone who wants to come. I think uh, that's my advertisement. Can you show that film very quickly? This is something called a battle action summary. And what it is, is a, a review of what a unit did over the 10-day period there in the box. And when I saw this during the after action review on the final day, I said, give me a copy of that film so I can show it to other people because it shows the kinds of things they go through and the, and the, and the uh, contribution of the other nations in that. So could you please show that, please?
show that just to show you that everything that's done uh, in these mission readiness rehearsals uh, replicate, don't, they don't duplicate, but they certainly replicate uh, what is done in combat. And uh, without a little bit more of a summary, you couldn't point out the fact that there were Germans, French, Croats, Romanians, Poles, uh, Afghans as part of those formations. You may have uh, seen them in some of the cordon and searches and some of the movements of the, the forces through, but it's very difficult to point those out. This in combination with the extensive UCOM exercise program that, that we have, I think we have many more opportunities than we've ever had before to bring forces together and train together. So as you do your work over the next few days, and we lay out the requirements to synchronize exercises and training events, and you start signing up for the kinds of things uh, that either you want to do or that you would like to do, it's important to realize that this is a, uh, a place where alliances really come together. Um, I heard an individual last week say that talk doesn't matter in alliances. What matters is action. And it's these kind of conferences where you pull things together uh, that result in actions and actually uh, contribute to effectiveness on the battlefield. So thank you for letting me open this thing up. I want to let you return to your work uh, as I go down to Garmish and see some other things. Uh, but it's good to have you all here, and thank you very much for taking the time. This is the biggest conference they've ever had in terms of combining training, so that's, uh, that's pretty critical. Thank you all for being here. Okay? All right, thank you.